Okay, so new topic. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about data streams. I'm not sure how far I, I will get uh, uh, by 5.30, but um, there are a number of interesting algorithms that in, assume the data comes in in a stream. Um, the characteristics of streams are, first of all, uh, typically very fast. Uh, you talk about uh, things like um, uh, the, the, the uh, search queries coming into Google, um, or uh, the a petabyte a day of data coming down from a satellite, um, and and the, sometimes you need you need um, your own algorithms uh, or, or specialized algorithms to deal with uh, with data that's coming in that fast, uh, and. Some of the algorithms, in fact, it even make a lot of sense if your data is, is sort of ordinary database data as well. Uh, so uh, in, in the, first, the, the, the first of these two, of two slide sets, I have, um, I want to just introduce the stream uh, data model, say a little, little bit about it, then the notion of sliding windows, which turns out to be very important. Uh, in describing what it is you can you can do with a, with a data stream, and then talk about a particular algorithm for counting ones uh, in in a in a in a bit in a bit stream. Um, and well, let's see. Okay, so the 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 key difference between data as a database person sees it and uh, the data as a stream management system or, or person sees it, is that in a, in a database system, you control how data, the rate at which data moves and, um, uh, and, and how it comes into, into your, data, your, 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 your database system. Uh, when you have a stream, it's, the, the rate is not under your control. Google has to handle every search query that comes in when it comes in, no matter how many people are searching at the same time. Um, you know, or uh, if, if, you're, you know, if you're Amazon, you, you have to deal with, you know, people want to buy stuff, they click. You don't control that. You have to deal with as, as many clicks and requests as, as come in at the time. So uh, the stream data model, which we, we, is, um, first of all, you have, you have several in, in input ports, often many input ports. Um, I'll assume that data elements are, are tuples, that is, um, records or, or vectors. Uh, uh, they, they come in at these p input ports. Again, you can't control the rate at which they occur. Um, and we assume that the, that the data is coming in so fast that you can't store all the data in a way that makes it easily accessible. Uh, maybe you can store it in some kind of archival storage. I mean, that's um, sort of what the, 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 uh, the, these systems that handle satellite data, it's what's called write-only storage. Uh, you, whatever comes in, you store it away on, on these, these big tertiary storage devices, and then nobody can ever see it again. It's, um, um, okay, but the, the, the algorithms that, that I want to talk about uh, are really, how, how can I say something useful about the stream? Uh, doing it in a way, preferably in main memory, or at the very least, using only a small amount of, of secondary storage, no tertiary or, or archival storage. Okay. Um, now, uh, I also want to talk about, uh, really, there are two query models. One is that I can ask ad hoc queries. Uh, that is, I ask a query in the sense of a, you know, a, a query 
uh, in the sense of querying a database, but I do it about the entire stream seen so far. So uh, here's a, a simple example. I, I, at any given time, I might want to ask, what is the maximum value that I've seen so far on this stream? And um, now that, that's fairly easy to answer. What it means is I have to keep, a, keep the maximum value stored separately. And that's only one, um, you know, it's one value, it's a couple of bytes. Um, Obviously, every time a stream element occurs, I need to update it, but that's probably okay. So I, I can probably do that. And then, um, a standing query is something which sort of operates autonomously, uh, and asks you to basically to report on the stream at all times. So, for example, uh, this query says, uh, every time I see a, a value in the stream that's bigger than any previous value, that becomes an output. I have to, I have to spontaneously uh, issue that as an, as an output. So, no, so nobody, nobody's asking for that, or you ask for it once and it applies forever. Uh, the, the system has to just spit out the answer every time uh, there, there is a new maximum value. And again, that, that is, uh, this query, it's not too hard to imagine how you would do that. Again, you keep the maximum value every time a new value comes in. If it's bigger than the previous maximum value, you not only change the maximum value, but you spit out the new value in, in, in the output. So, so here's the proof. You have a, 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 a query, a query ma management system. Uh, it stores stand, standing queries. It can accept and answer ad hoc queries as well. Uh, there are many streams entering. Um, uh, it makes outputs occasionally, uh, either in response to ad hoc queries or standing queries. Uh, and there's archival storage, which is large enough to store everything but so large that you can't conveniently compute with it. You can only do that sort of offline. And then you've got some limited working storage, which again might be a main memory, uh, preferably is main memory, might be, uh, might be secondary memory. memory. Okay. Um, so, again, there, there are lo lots, of, lots of applications of this. Uh, for example, um, you know, if, if a search, search engine like Google might want to know about trends, what queries are appearing more frequently today than, than yesterday. Uh, an interesting application, wh which is actually in, was used by Yahoo in practice, is um, they wanted to know about uh, pages of theirs that are being clicked more frequently this hour than the previous hour. And the reason, well, sometimes that's because, uh, you know, something has happened and, and, and everybody, um, you know, needs to know about Justin Bieber or, or, or something <laughs> like that. Uh, but uh, the practical reason it was that... Um, you, you see this phenomenon whenever a link gets broken. People click on the page many times before they go away and realize that they're never going to get it. Uh, so you actually have a big spike in the number of, of clicks on the page. And, and so that, was, that actually helps Yahoo to find and fix broken pages without having somebody having to look at all million or so pages that they put out. Um, you can say IP um, packets are, are streams. Again, a, a switch is a, a number of streams uh, coming in, number of, of streams going out, um, and the kinds of things you might want to do is to find out where packets are headed so you have some idea of, of where the delays in the network might be, or if you notice that there are a lot, all of a sudden a lot of packets headed for one address, that could be a denial of service attack and you'd want to intercept that in the middle of the internet rather than delivering it 
uh, to the uh, uh, to, to the edge. And so, uh, you know, people who study these things have, have, have pretty much are pretty much convinced that uh, the 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 only sensible way to ask most queries about a stream is to imagine that you have a window. Typically, it's got a fixed length. That is, you, you ask something about the last n inputs on a stream. Um, sometimes you might say uh, the window might be uh, uh, time delimited. So you know all the uh, inputs received in the in the previous hour. But but the idea is that that you just can't go back forever in the history of the stream. You have to keep you have to keep focusing on the last so much of the stream. Again, it, typically it's all archived, so in principle if you have to go back two years, uh, you can do that. You just can't do it online. You, you can't do it as a standing query or reasonably as an ad hoc query. Um, okay, now a lot of the algorithms th that 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 are worth talking about for, for for streams are are those where the window is finite, but it's so large you can't store it in main memory. So you'd like to do something uh, something simple to sort of summarize the the window in a way that still lets you ask answer a certain class of queries, but maybe not every query. Um, uh, now, you know, these days you have so much main memory, I mean, windows can be enormous, but in many of these applications you actually have many different streams. And, um, I, I, you know, if you've got a million, if you've got a million streams and you want to keep a window for each stream in main memory, then the windows all of a sudden can't be very big. Or you have to summarize the windows in in some way, and that's that's what we're really going to uh, concentrate on is is um, is summarizing them. So um, this this um, I don't know if, if this picture is useful or not, but here's a stream uh, coming in. Window is is six the last six characters. So at some time it contains S D F G H J. Now the next uh, element k comes in, the last element s falls out of the window and is no longer part of the window, so uh, you can see what the window now contains d, f, g, h, j, k. Uh, then the next element l comes in, d falls out, and, and so on. Okay. So at any, at any time, the window consists of the last six characters. That I've seen. Okay. I'm sorry. So, uh, I want to ask. I mean, uh, why to use this window model rather than just processing the stream like single tuple at a time? What is the benefit we get out of it? Um. Well, again, it's a qu it's a question of. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can't just process the whole stream. You can't ask questions. Uh, the, the stream is coming in so fast, you can't just store all the tuples and make them all accessible at the same time. Okay. Uh, but but um, so I'm I'm asking about window of size one. So if you are doing single action on a tuple and then maintaining a model, or Updating a model no, with a single tuple. No, no, remember, if, again, if a window of size one says, all I ever care about is the most recent tuple, yeah. and I'll never ask anything that doesn't pertain to only that one silly little tuple. Okay. And you don't get anything interesting when you do that. It, you get more interesting things if your window is, say, length of billion. So you want to know how many of the last billion, <laughs> let's say, um, you know, it, again, think of it as, uh, think of it as click streams. You want to know how many you keep us keep the last billion clicks and i want to know how which urls have been clicked twice as frequently in the most recent half a billion 
as in the half a billion before that. That's the kind of question I want to ask. But if you keep the whole thing and you want to ask, let's say, how many, um, uh, you know, what URLs have been clicked more in the last half than in the first half. First of all, it, the, the, the halves get bigger and bigger as time goes on. And it, the question no longer is, is really interesting because it's, you know, after two years, you're asking how many, uh, which URLs were clicked more frequently this year than last year. Not interesting. Anyway, uh, so, uh, but, and, and moreover, then you just have so much data that it becomes harder and harder to, to, to answer any query like that. So that's, that's, sort of, that's sort of why it makes sense in many situations to say, I'm going to pretend the stream of interest is only some reasonable number of, uh, of inputs into the, into the past. Uh, so, um, anyway, may, may, maybe, maybe in fact this, this example might, might help a bit. Okay, so my stream is integers. Um, I'm using window of size n. And I'm going to say, I want to know at any time what is the average of the integers in the window. Now, um, again, think about doing that. What is the average of the integers for the entire stream e forever? That's a little bit trickier. It, it, could, it could be done. It's actually it's not, it's not that hard. But, uh, but also becomes sort of less meaningful as time goes on because after a while you're just, a the average is dominated by stuff that, uh, you know, that came in two years ago and, and, and may have no relevance today. Okay, so what's the average of the integers? The, 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 okay, for the first n inputs, you just do the sum and the count and um, then uh, one more step at each, at each input, uh, you get the average. So it's really just for each input you're doing three arithmetic steps. One to, to add one to the count, another to add the, the input element to the sum, and then another one to do the division. Okay. So that's, that's sort of doable, right? It, 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 the work is, is just a constant per input. Now, uh, after you've got your first n inputs, uh, now the window begins to slide. And what, what you need to do is, um, uh, okay, say, say i is the next input. Now, the last, the most, the oldest input that's in the window is going to fall out of the window. So let's say that that's j. So you're adding i, you're subtracting j from the sum. The count doesn't change. So if you think about it, uh, to get the average, you can update the average by simply taking i minus j, dividing it by n, and adding that to the previous average. And that gives you sort of the increment in the average. Okay, so that, that, that's, that's, that's not that hard. And again, it's just uh, three arithmetic steps per input. Okay, should be, uh, should be feasible. Okay, so again, that's, that's fairly cool because it, it says the, the, the amount of work we do per input is probably dominated by, by the uh, protocol that actually accepts an input and, and puts it in some buffer to, to be processed. Anyway, so um, order n time per input is always, uh, is, is always good. But the bad thing is it requires the entire window be stored as is. And again, if n is a billion, well, you can store a billion integers in main memory these days. Not such a big deal. But, again, what if, if n is, is a trillion? You can't, you can't store that in main memory. Or if uh, n is a million, but you have a million streams and you want to keep the average uh, on each of those streams. Uh, so you, you, might, you might have some, some problems. And in fact, in, in for this particular query, there really is nothing you can do if, if you want the exact answer. Okay. So 
what I want to talk about is, is an example of, of an approximate algorithm. Uh, the, uh, the goal of this algorithm is, is to count the ones in a binary uh, stream. Um, and it, it, it uses much less space than the length of the window. And what you pay for that is that you don't get um, you don't get an exact answer. What I will describe to you gives you an answer that is no, off by no more than 50%. Uh, there is a better algorithm that, that it can, is off by at most epsilon. You make epsilon as, any, uh, as small as you like except zero. Um, and it still takes the same running time to within an or order of magnitude. That is running time per input. Um, and, and by the way, counting the number of ones in a window suffers from the same problem as computing the average of, uh, of, uh, of, of a stream of integers. Uh, you can't get the exact answer unless you keep the window itself. Okay, so you re if, if you want, to, you'd really need n bits to store a window of, of size n. If you, always, if you want to always be able to know how many ones are in the window. Okay, so we're going to do something that seems a little bit more, uh, more complex than just counting the number of ones in the window. We want to be set up to answer the question, how many, uh, I can qu at any time query, say, how many ones are there in the l most recent k bits? where k is anything up to the window length. Okay. And again, I can't get an exact answer. I will always get an answer within 50%. Okay. So again, certainly if I store the most recent n bits, I can at least answer the question. Of course, since k is an, is an input parameter to the, to the query, uh, it's going to take me time k to count up to look at the last k bits and, and find the answer. So that's not even, um, that, that's not that great. Um, and so, even, so uh, even if I had enough room to store all the bits, answering the query efficiently can't really do it. Um, and, you know, and again, as, as, as I've said, you know, you know a billion bits, no problem storing it in main memory. Uh, but if you have millions of streams and you wa want even a, a mi million as the length of your of your win window, you're not going to be able to do that in main memory. Um, you know, so uh, just just to give you an, exa an example of, of where this might make sense, uh, again, you might have a site. Um, in which, with lots of uh, you know, lots of pages, uh, and every time there's a there's a request for for one of those pages, uh, you want to log it and you want to know how many, uh, you know, in the in the last k requests, how many of these, um, you know, for each for each of your pages, you want to know how many times in the last k requests was that page uh, requested. Uh, so, uh, technically, you've got one stream, which is a, a, a sequence of URLs. Let's say we want to keep the last billion requests. Um, you can convert this into a large number of streams, but the streams are binary. Okay, so um, what I want, I want to think now of, th there's a binary stream for each URL, and you know, again, it, the position has a one if if that URL was the one requested, and it's zero if if if, if, if some other URL was re requested. Okay. Now I, I want to talk about an algorithm called um, DG, I call it DGIM. It was named after these are four uh, of my my colleagues uh, listed here. 
Uh, and the interesting thing is it can maintain windows of length n, but it only has to store log squared n bits per, per stream. And again, if, if n is a billion, log base 2 of n is, is 30, uh, 30 squared is 900. Uh, 900 bits a lot better than a billion. Uh, uh, well, of course, there's a constant factor that's hidden by the big O, but it's, it's, it's still a lot better for, in, in for numbers of that scale. But as I said, it will give you an approximate answer. Uh, again, in the version I give you, it can be off by as much as 50%, uh, but you can uh, improve that down to anything greater than zero if, if, if you just, you still be order log, n, order log squared n bits, but the constant factor would grow up, would grow, grows inversely as, in, inversely with the epsilon that you want to be the, the maximum error, f error factor. Okay. Um, now th the algorithm, okay, it, it has, there's a notion of time stamp. Okay, that is each input com that comes in, the first, uh, the first input that ever comes into the stream will call, have time stamp zero, the next one will have one, two, and so on. Uh, however, since the window is of length n, Anything in the history beyond n, we can completely forget about that. We never, we'll never care about that again. So as a result, you can record your time stamps modulo n. And, and what that means is that all your time stamps uh, can be represented by log base 2 of n bits. Um, now there's this, co this concept called a bucket, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to break the stream up into, into segments. Each segment will have a number of ones, which is a power of two, and the, the, there'll be certain rules for, for how, uh, how many ones can be in a bucket. But what we're, going to re what we're going to represent the stream by is not the actual bits, but the buckets of which it is comprised. And by the way, no stream of length n will ever need more than about two log base two of n buckets. Okay, so the bucket then will consist of the time stamp of its end, of its end and that again was modulo n, so it's going to be log n bits. Uh, and the number of ones in between the beginning and the end of the bucket. Okay. Um, and by the way, the number of ones in a bucket is always a power of two, and therefore you can represent the number of um, the, the number of ones in a bucket by the power of two. So it is so since no bucket can be longer than n, log log n bits will suffice to represent the size of a bucket, that is the number of ones that it contains. Although it, it doesn't really matter because we're already spending log n bits, uh, bits representing the timestamp, so that dominates the cost of representing a bucket. Uh, okay, now let's see, there, there are rules. A stream will have between will have either one or two buckets with a given power of two number of ones up to some maximum. Okay. Uh, the buckets, the territory or, uh, of the bit stream that are represented by a bucket, they don't overlap. So the, the stream is divided into disjoint buckets. Uh, zeros don't count, so there might be some zeros that are not part of any bucket. That doesn't really matter. Now, the, again, the, one of the big, the big tricks is you want to sort the buckets by size so that the recent buckets are little. You know, th there'll be one or two buckets of size one, that is a single one, and those will be the most recent. 
And then there'll be one or two buckets of size two, and those will be next most recent. And then there'll be one or two buckets of size four, which are a little older. And then one or two buckets of size eight, which are still older than that. Uh, and then all the way up to um, as many buckets as you need to represent the n bits. Uh, no bucket, of course, will have more than log n one, uh, will require, sorry, there can't be more than two log base two of n buckets because there are at most n ones. And if, if, you, th if you think about it, um, since the uh, sizes of the buckets are growing exponentially, <coughs> within log n, uh, with, sorry, within two log n buckets, you get to a bucket whose size is, is already n. And that's going to cover everything in, 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 the, uh, in, in the window. Now, uh, again, every bucket records its end time. Once the end time falls out of the window, it, you, just, you just drop it. It's, it's no longer part of the representation. Okay, so, so here's, um, well, it's, this is not a, uh, because um, PowerPoint has sort of disc a discrete grid that you don't normally notice, it's, uh, things are a little bit off, but here's, here's a stream. This is the most recent bit to zero, and this is going back in time. Um, we have two, two buckets of size one. The first one is this one. The second one is that one. Then we have one bucket of size two, which consists of this one zero one here. And then you've got two buckets of size four. There's one one zero one zero one is one of them. And then previous to that, we have one zero one zero one zero one. And then here's the bucket of size eight, another bucket of size eight. Uh, here's a bucket of size 16. And that's already partially outside the window. <coughs> okay, and so no, any other, any previous bucket will have its end time prior to the end most recent inputs. So th that's gone. They, we no longer have any record of any, any buckets outside that. Okay, so everybody have a, a feel for what the buckets look like? Now, a new, a new bit comes in. Okay, first of all, if the end time of the, mo of the oldest bucket is equal to modulo, is modulo n equal to the time of the current uh, uh, input, that means that it's, it's, it's n, it's more than n, or it's n plus one, uh, time units ago, uh, so we, we drop it. Okay, and that's why we only need to, to calculate times modulo n. Uh, now if the current bit zero, that's, that's the end, the, that's all we need to do. The buckets then stay the same. Because the interesting thing is what happens when the current bit is a one. Um, well, first of all, we're going to create a bucket with just that one. That, that is, it will have the time stamp, the end time stamp is the current time, and the uh, log log of the size is zero. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a size one. The trouble is, if I had two buckets of size one, now I have three buckets of size one, and that's illegal. So what do I do? I take the two oldest buckets of size one and I turn them into a bucket of size two. And I can do that by simply forgetting about the, the, the third of, of the oldest, the, the, mo the, uh, the oldest of the three, its end time stamp doesn't matter anymore. The end time of that bucket of size two is the end time of the second oldest of the ones. But I raise its size so that it's instead of one, it's now of size two. Of course, 
now, having created a new, new bucket of size 2, I may now have three buckets of size 2, and that's not legal, so I have to take the two oldest 2s and turn them into a 4. And, of course, that can create three 4s, so I have to create an 8 from two of them, and that may create three 8s and so on. But, but, but it can't ripple more than log n time, because, again, because there can't be buckets that big, bigger than... than uh, than size n. So uh, let's uh, again. Let us. This is the example stream that I gave you. Uh, and here are the current uh, the current buckets. Now, suppose a one comes in. Oops. Okay. So I've created a new bucket of size one. And oops, now I have three buckets of size one. That's not good. So these two guys are going to get combined into a bucket of size two. And that's been done here. And that's all I need to do because I only had one bucket of size two. Now, suppose that in the next three bits that come in are one, zero, one. So this is what I, I've created for the... The one, the uh, first one that comes in, I create a bucket of size one. That's okay, that just gave me two buckets of size one. Zero came in, I didn't do anything. One comes in, I create the third bucket of size one. Now these two are going to have to be combined into a bucket of size two. Now I've got three buckets of size two, so I combine the oldest two into a bucket of size four. And you can see what happens, it's going to ripple, right? I've got now got three buckets of size four, so I combine the oldest two into an eight. That gives me three eights, so I combine the oldest two eights into a sixteen. And I guess I'm okay because I only have two buckets of size sixteen. Okay. And so the whole, the, you know, in the worst case, it could take me time, order log n to, to, do all the rippling and, and fix fix up the uh, the bucket sizes. Uh, on average, of course, it's going to be constant. Okay, most ed most editions of a bucket of size one will not ripple very far. Uh, okay, so you have you know in the extreme case, one input comes in, you might take order log n uh, time. On average, it will be order one. Now. Given that I'm representing things by buckets, how do I uh, estimate, uh, how do I answer the query? How many ones are there in the most recent k bits for some value k? Well, first of all, I'm going to only look at the buckets that are of, uh, whose n timestamp is within k of the current time. Right, because anything else doesn't it can't possibly contribute to the last k bits, uh, and again this is going to take me all the time order log n to 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 sort these things out to figure out uh, or to estimate how many ones there are. Remember, I don't know um, exactly how many ones there are because the ones. The old ones have been collapsed into a bucket. The bucket covers some territory, but I don't know how many. You know, are the ones heavy at the recent end or at the at the uh, the oldest end, or how how are they? Uh, how do they actually sort out? So I'm never going to be able to recover exactly where the ones are in in the territory represented by the bucket, but. I do know this. Of all of the buckets that are not the oldest, they begin within the, the, the last k time, uh, within the last k inputs. Therefore, all of their ones count toward the answer to the query. So I'll just, I'll just add those. And then I've got this oldest bucket. I don't know how many of its ones are within the k. So I'll, I'll just take a shot, I'll say half of them are in, and half of them are out. Okay. Now, how bad could that be? 
So suppose that the oldest bucket has two to the i, uh, uh, is, is, is of size two to the i. Now, I know at least one of the ones is, is, in, is within the last k, because otherwise the whole, window, the whole bucket would be, out, be, uh, be outside of that, the, k, the range of the last k, and therefore I wouldn't even be looking at it. Uh, at most, all two to the i might be within the window, uh, not, with the, not within the window, within the, the, the last k. Um, so my, my error is at most two to the i minus one. Okay. I, I say two to the i minus one are there, it could be as little as one or at mo as, as many as two to the i. So I, it's certainly no worse than off by two to the i minus one. However, since there is a bucket of size 2 to the i, there's also at least one bucket of size 2 to the i minus 1, and at least one bucket of size 2 to the i minus 2, and so on, down to of size 1. And so I, uh, and since you also have at least one from the oldest bucket, the true sum, uh, the, the, the true answer to the query can't be less than 2 to the i. Okay, so I've made an, er an error of at most half the true sum. Okay, so I, I claim that the answer to any query can't be off by more than 50%, and usually is a lot better than that. Okay, because whenever there are two buckets of size, two to the i minus one, uh, already you get a, a, a third would be the, the maximum error, and, and, and so on. Um, okay, um, okay, so um, again, uh, the book describes how you fix that up to make the error epsilon instead of a half. Um, it's, it's not too hard. Um, okay, so we have a, a try, uh, let's see, I, um, this is all the material that I had prepared for today. Uh, I can, uh, let's see, I actually finished 10 minutes early. Uh, is anybody objecting? Um, well, let's see, we can, fi we can, f we can figure out, ass assuming that the buck, you know, the probability is half of there being one and half of there being two buckets of any size, uh, you can figure out the average <coughs> correct, the average size of the correct answer. Uh, the average, if, if you assume that the lag and that the, the last, the, the end of the, the the end, the kth, the kth element can be anywhere within the last bucket with equal probability. So then the average error there would be half of half of the maximum, or it would be two to the i minus two. So the average error is going to be, I'd like to say, about a third of the fifty percent, or about an average would be about a sixth, some, something like that. But, but again, that, that, that's making s uh, very specific simplifying assumptions. Uh, 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 another question, which is one counting of, of windows, mm -hmm. does it have any, is it an abstraction of some application or re more, could be extended to solve more realistic uh, um, problems? Yeah, um, well, uh, again, it, it, it does represent uh, counting large occurrences of when, when you when 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 you re what your stream is really doing is like it's a URL stream, okay. where where what you want is an approximate count of the number of occurrences of each URL. Exactly. Okay, so, so that's right. Yeah, but essentially, you can do this uh, yeah. generalization, so value counting, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, we're going to talk about the. Uh, I think tomorrow, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to stay counting, count yeah. distinct. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Very key. Uh, you know, it's all, uh, you know, my, my old colleague, John Hopcroft, uh, and Ravi Kanan have 
come out with a competitor for the NMDS book. And there is one algorithm in both books, and that's Flagellet Martin. Okay, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. That's the only thing that we both agree on is important. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that's what Volker said. It's, 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 it's counting, the sti- counting the number of distinct elements in a stream without having to remember exactly what elements you've seen. Mm, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Thank you very much. why don't we... Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um,